Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to look at these. This is a choke or a filter choke. We're going to put one of these into this. All right, this is the Marshall DSL 100, which I have just recently completed modding. If you want to see the mods or hear the mods that I've made to this amp, please check out my previous video. Today, we're going to do a tone test of the amp stock has no choke, all right? So I've recorded um, some playing through the looper on my Axe FX3, I've recorded that stock. We're gonna install this and I'll record the same loop uh, back through the amp and we'll be able to compare the tone and performance of the amp before and after. I wanna talk about what these are as well and what it kind of does theory-wise. And lastly, I'm going to measure some measure voltages in the amp under load all right, so with, you know, with the amp actually um, having to work, and we'll measure voltages through the supply, uh, through the supply nodes before and after. Stick around. So let's start by talking about what a choke is, right? A choke is an inductor. And this diagram here basically sets out in simple terms what an inductor is, right? So it's insulated wire wound in a tight coil around a magnetic core. Okay, so why is that important? Well, <clears throat> two things, right? This has uh, the inductor will do two things for you, right? It's actually called a choke because it chokes high frequencies, which the name came from, right? So um, the device is called an inductor and the application of the inductor with respect to filtering your high voltage DC supply line in your tube amp, that application is called a choke because it's configured uh, to choke the high frequencies, right? So how does it do that? Well, um, with the interphysics here, right? But basically, when current flows through a coil like this, it produces a magnetic field, okay? And that magnetic field um, will do two things for you. Number one is that uh, any attempt to uh, for AC current to flow through an inductor like this will result in the magnetic field changing and the magnetic field will induce a voltage in this coil which will oppose the current change. All right, so simplistically, um, if you get an AC current flowing through this thing, it's going to push it back and resist it, right? So through your filter choke, DC, can pass, but AC will be pushed back, right? So it's actually filtering any residual AC that's left um, on your B plus line, right? After rectification and the first, you know, the mains 
filter caps. The second property of an inductor is that it stores energy in that magnetic field. All right, so what that means is that if the current drops, uh, the magnetic field will be released back as electrical energy back into, uh, back into the circuit. So this is the Hammond uh, choke that I used um, in the DSL 100, right, that I added to it. So this is a drop-in replacement for, you know, a, a JCM 800 uh, 100 watt amp so I just went with these specs right <clears throat> it's 5 Henry that's a ref reference to the uh, how much inductance uh, the choke has right and the Henry you know the the inductance is obviously at, at measured at a DC voltage right to so 120 so the interesting thing here I guess the real reason I brought up the spec sheet is because I wanted to show this right it is from the black to the red wire, it's 115 ohms. So let's see the application of the choke in our good old classic Marshall Plexi, right? 9059 Super League. This is one of the best schematics out there. This is July 1970. Um, and I am just going to focus on the power supply here, right? So there's plenty of things that you can look at in this circuit, but for the purposes of today, we're looking at the choke. Here's the choke right here, all right? It's an inductor, it's a coil. This is the electrical symbol for it, right? A coil and an iron core. Now, what's actually happening, this is your power transformer here, okay? And this is your high voltage, these are your high voltage secondaries. This is your, this is your um, standby switch, all right, double pole. And this is your bridge rectifier, all right? So at this point, we've now got rectified AC, which has been filtered, all right? These are the two mains filter caps, right? So two 100 microfarad uh, can caps. Um, obviously, this is our uh, HT fuse, okay? Coming up here. Output transformer. The output transformer sec, uh, center tap all right, is always connected right there. It's always connected at the mains supply. This is our mains supply. All right. This is how your power tubes get their DC voltage onto their plates because you've got the center tap of the primary side of your output transformer connected directly to the rectified mains, right? So this is in a, you know, in a 50, uh, 59 super lead, let's call it 470 volts, give or take, it depends on the era. At 470 volts, DC is fed to the plates through the output transformer primary. Right? This is the plate, 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 plate. From there, it makes its way through the choke. And on the other side of the choke is the screen supply, okay? So these power tubes need a screen supply and the screen supply is via the 1K resistor. And you'll see this in layouts, right? So you'll often see these five watt 1K resistors wired between pins four and pin six on a power tube socket, okay? It's, and they are connected directly to the screen supply. It's on the other side of this choke. And um, as I said, the job of this choke here, right, is to filter out any AC ripple that happens to be left um, on this power supply line um, and do it in a way that doesn't drop too much voltage out of the power supply line. There is an alternate way to do it, all right? If you don't want to use a choke, or you want to save money, you use a resistor here instead. And the reason you'd use a resistor is because of a simple low pass filter network, right? So if you think about what is the job of these components in our power supply line here, okay? Resistor, capacitors, resistor, capacitor, resistor, capacitor. It's a, it's a, 
it's a low pass filter network and its job is to filter out pretty much everything right so certainly if you think about um, if you're in my part of the world you've got 50 hertz mains right if you're in if you're in the americas and other parts of the world you've got 60 hertz when you go through a bridge rectifier you'll have a 100 hertz ripple on this line here uh, or 120 hertz um, if your supply is 60 and the job of all this stuff right um, is to filter out all of that to ensure that there's no hum in the end because if you've got a 100 hertz ripple sitting on this what should be steady dc and it's been fed into the plates of these power tubes and so on you're going to hear hum in the amp okay so having a choke here and its ability to you know repel ac it's one of the side benefits right you'll have less hum in the amp at idle as well and this low pass filter network which runs all the way through here makes sure that um your amplified signal as it makes its way through your power amp doesn't get cascaded all the way through the power supply all right so it, you know it's going to send any of that um any of those frequencies to ground so here's a very very simple low pass filter right you you know google low pass filter on the internet and you'll find this picture so um, you've got a resistor and a capacitor to ground, and it only allows low frequency signals to kind of pass if you, if you want, if you if you like, right? So, if you were looking to save some money on building your amp, you could forego the choke and use just a static resistor here, right? And it works fine. It is a low pass filter, and it will filter AC out of your power supply line. And on the DSL100H that I worked on, this is this guy here, all right? It's a 270 ohm, seven watt resistor, R111, all right? And you can see this is going off to the screen supplies on the power tubes. And um, in the clip here, you'll see, right, this is where I actually take this out and replace it with an actual choke if we look at the dsl 100 schematic you can see you know in reference to the good old classic 1959 super league same thing here right um coming out of the standby switch off the power transformer we're into a bridge rectifier four diodes all right mains filter caps coming along here you see this right center tap to the primary side of the output transformer the output transformer in turn goes off and supplies the DC voltage to the plates of your power tubes okay here's our screen resistor or our screen supply resistor I should say 270 ohms at 7 watts R111 111 all right and then on the other side all right the left hand side of that resistor is the screen supply and so tapping off there is the supply through a 5 watt 1k resistors to the screen of your el34s now as i said right these are the resistors that you would normally see in you know 90 percent of amps um soldered between pin 4 and pin 6 so why not use a cheap resistor rather than a choke all right they're both going to do the same job with respect to filtering ac well yes that's right <laughs> except here's the problem all right we all know ohm's law v equals ir all right voltage equals uh, current times resistance right so when your amp is under load like you got it cranked right and you you hit that a chord what's what happens right is these power tubes draw current they've sucked current right and your power supply here is doing its darndest to give as much juice 
to these power tubes as they demand it. So when you get a high a higher current flowing through this uh, power supply line here, you're going to get a greater voltage drop. Right? The resistance is constant. Current is going up. That means the voltage drop will go up. So if you measure the voltage on this side, and then you might measure the voltage on this side, the amount of voltage drop across the screen supply resistor will be increasing as the needs of the amp to draw more current increases. What that means is you get the voltage supply to the whole amp drops every time you hit strings on your guitar. All right? That is what SAG is. You know, experience SAG, right? So um, what you get is, you know, it's just, it's, you don't get as much whack and punch and push out of your power section and it also sags you know the whole lamp all, all the way through now the reason i showed this diagram here was to demonstrate the dc resistance right of this guy is 115 ohms compared to our mate here the screen supply resistor it's 270 so it's two and a quarter times less which is, you know, you might go, well, that's not much, but it, it makes a difference, right? Because it means that your voltage drop um, across this component in the amp is, is going to be half. It should be at least half, if not a slightly more, than uh, what you would get with a static resistor. Plus the inductor has other great properties, right? Um, including that it actually stores energy as a magnetic field, which can be released back into the circuit. So in fitting a choke to an amp like this, the first thing you've got to do is find a place for it to go, right? So um, sometimes you can mount the choke actually inside the chassis, right? Like in a Soldano, that's uh, often how it's done. So, um, but more often than not, right, these Marshall-style amps, you'll see the choke obviously on the outside of the chassis sitting on top. Look, here's my choke here. This is... Um, uh, you can see this is a Hammond 194F, right? It's a 5 Henry choke at 120 milliamps DC. So this is actually a uh, replacement choke for a you know Mark II JCM 800 uh, 100 watt, right? So I chose it as a suitable addition to this 100 watt uh, DSL. And look, you know, kind of here or whatever would be would be fine, but PCB is right under there, right? So to mount the choke there, I'd have to bring the whole PCB out. So what I'm going to do, which is far more, you know, far easier way to do it, right? And just as technically correct, I'm going to mount it there. Okay. So it's going to sit alongside the power transformer, which it would anyway, just on the other side. And on this side of the chassis, uh, there's nothing covering it, right? So I can drill through knowing that I'm not going to hit the printed circuit board. I don't need to pull the printed circuit board out. And um, it also it's going to be well clear of uh, the head cabinet, right? Because the head cap just you know comes up from this side here. No worries at all. Plenty of room. Right, so I'm going to mark it out um, and we'll get drilling. Let's do it. <laughs> So we're just going to take some voltage readings of the amp uh, out of standby with no signal coming into it, right? So the amp's at idle. Um, I'm just gonna take three measurements. I'm gonna take a uh, measurement on either side. This is the screen resistor, screen supply resistor, okay? So this is the big resistor that we're going to be replacing with our choke. So at idle, this is basically uh, the plate voltage here, right? 460. 
And if I check that, I've just referenced that against pin 3 on one of the power tubes here. Alright. It's basically the same reading. Okay. The difference there will be the drop um, across the output transformer primary. You get about you know one voltage drop there. So here we are, the B plus supply, right? 460. The other side of this cement resistor, this is the screen supply now. Alright, 455, which goes to this dropping resistor here. There's 455 on one side. The other side, it's a phase inverter supply, right? So 404. Let's call it 405 volts, right? What I'm going to do now is we're going to run a 150 millivolt peak to peak input signal, one kilohertz sine wave, simulating, you know, a, a, a effectively the amplitude of the guitar signal. I've got the master volume on midday, right? So we've got this thing, the 100 water cranked up to halfway. Let's uh, do that now, and I'll measure the same three. Uh, parts of the M, same three nodes. B plus sagging, right? Because the amp is working hard. We're drawing current. Here's our voltage on the other side of that screen resistor, and here's the voltage at the phase inverter supply. Okay, we will repeat this once the choke is in. So just in terms of wiring the choke in. Right, this cement resistor here, screen supply resistor, it has to come out. So, right, I could move the whole PCB, flip it over, desolder it, pull it out. No way I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do, get some these cutters here. I'm going to cut this off. And I'm going to use the legs that will be left there as terminals to simply solder the choke on. Chokes are not, uh, they have no polarity, right? So you don't have to worry about, you know, which side goes where. Just as long as you get, what, you know, each wire on, uh, one wire on each end, you're all good to go. So the choke is in, right? You can see just wide straight into the two terminals that were left after I cut that cement resistor out. Going to take some voltage readings here. So the amp is in uh, out of standby. Okay, there's no input signal coming in though. So put the uh, multimeter there. Let me just move this a bit. There we go. Right, so. It's our B plus. 464. Screen supply. Okay. Phase inverter node. And we'll compare those to previous. They're just a little bit up. Okay, so I've got the master volume on uh, midday again, halfway. We've got the same input signal. I'm going to run it into the amp and we'll take the readings at the same three spots. So just finally, on the theory side, I just wanted to record the measured voltages uh, that I took with the meter with the amp uh, at load, right? So this is where I had the master volume up at midday, and I'm running a uh, 150 
millivolt peak to peak uh, signal one kilohertz sine wave into the front of the amp right so um, remember the plate voltage at idle was close to 460 459 and so this is our mains uh, reading B plus line 445 the same as you'd expect um, given the same wall voltage which as you know can actually fluctuate depending on the time of day um, 445 and 445 the screen supply node okay 434 440 a difference of 6 volts and the phase inverter there a difference of 5 volts so the interesting thing here is actually to compare the voltage drop um, between the mains node and the screen supply node with the um, the screen resistor in place i.e the no choke column against the column with uh, with the choke in place right so you can see with the no choke um, readings we've got an 11 volt delta between the mains and screens and it's only five volts um, with the choke in place so if we move that on um, let's have a look at some basic readings and apply some very basic maths to that right so the dc resistance in ohms 270 ohm fixed resistor the dc resistance of the filter choke was 120 ohms right so as a ratio and i said earlier in the clip right just over two two to one it's 2.25 to one all right so we'll look at the difference in the voltage drops here 11 volts 5 volts if you, you get that back down to a ratio it's 2.2 to one all right so i guess uh, it's good to see the theory um, actually play out um, in reality now of course what we're dealing with here is there's still a voltage drop um the choke still has a resistance right but you can see from the maths here right it's a, it's less um than half of the resistance of the um straight up um, resistor it'll give better filtering outcomes and as we have also mentioned, it has a great property of the ability to release magnetic potential energy back in as current into your circuit. And finally, all right, very simple look here, just using Ohm's law, V equals IR, rearrange that equation um, to measure the current. And again, um, not surprising, but always nice to see these things pan out. In reality, when you think about the theory, in that the current draw um, through that part of the circuit is identical in both situations, right? So 11 volt drop across the 270 ohm screen resistor is 41 milliamps of current. And we've got 5 volts across the 120 ohm DC resistance of the filter choke, also 41 milliamps. Okay, so finally, uh, in the clip, I'm going to do some more playing and get some more tones going and I'll finish off with a uh, some final comments about the amp and how it's performing um, with the new choke installed. <laughs>
A choke is a very simple and cost-effective addition to an amp like this that doesn't have one stop, right? So the amp, to me, it's got uh, more immediacy. Um, it doesn't sag as much, right? So um, it feels more lively under the fingers. It's like it's got more kind of um, elasticity or something. It's kind of got more springiness in it, and I can feel it in the fingers, right? It's much nicer to play. Um, and it's just got more clarity, right? It's just added that extra lift. Um, so with the mods that I've made to this and the addition of the choke, um, I think it's really kind of you know, moved this amp uh, pretty significantly forward. And um, yeah, if any more DSL 100s cross my path, I'll be doing um, uh, the same additions. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do now. Um, I'll see you next time.